It's another day, or is it the same day? Hard to tell this week. Not that this week matters, because this week could be part of next week, or the week after, or it could be a month from now. The internet is strange, and so is YouTube. But hey, who cares? We're here and we're having fun. Right, Fernando? Yes, sir. Heck yeah! That's the attitude we like to hear. We have a Dodge Caravan. We're gonna put some front speakers in it. The customer doesn't care about these speakers here. He doesn't sit back here, he's not worried about it. This has some spots in the dash for some speakers. There's no speakers there, he wants speakers. He's also got six by nines in the door. What we're gonna do is put in a 1330 NEX, a pair of Kenwood Exelon six and a halfs in the dash, and a pair of Kenwood Exelon six by nines in the door. Now, I know what you're thinking, wait a minute. What is, this is a double din, right? And that is definitely not a double din. By the way, these are the speaker locations I'm talking about. And of course, Fernando already has the six by nine out of the door. Way to go, Fernando. Thank you, sir. You bet, you bet. Top job. Well, Metra, in its infinite wisdom, has made a dash kit for this. Now, don't get too excited. In typical Metra fashion, it works. And that's about all you can expect. Does it look great? It doesn't look terrible. But the dashes on these typically look like crap. Let me show what I mean. This, this right here, this decoupling, typically happens, so this peels off. Usually this is about a half inch. In this case, maybe three eighths. It's gonna grow. Typically these two top brackets are broke. There's an airbag usually here, but in the kit it's it's here. It's kind of weird, I don't understand. It goes in and allows us to put a double din in. I guess we can't be too picky because it's an older vehicle maybe, I don't know. But anyways, Metro has a kit, we've used it before, but today we're gonna film it. So if you guys are rocking one of these grocery getting, mom hugging, soccer go getting, family crazy kids beating vehicles, or just a convenient place to put all your crap while you're driving around, Dodge Caravan, you're in luck. We're gonna show you how to put a dash kit in. Let's get started, shall we? Okay, I don't have screws in the bottom. It's not gonna go back on. So we so need to find a different on. speaker because yeah. the door panel won't go back on if we have to space it out a half an inch. So. All right, I think we're good. Okay. Update to our speakers. The Exelons were just a tad bit too deep. They were hitting the window when we'd roll the window up and down. There's a regulator that like literally rides right behind the magnet. We were trying to figure out how far we'd have to space out the speaker and it was, it was about a half inch. Now if we did that, then the door panel, this guy here, wouldn't go back on. We ended up having to switch out to these Alpine S-types so it would sit flush in the door. Now normally it's not a problem. We can make just about any speaker fit where it needs to go. In this case though, it wasn't worth it because when we had it spaced out, door panel would hit and it was hitting the surround on the speaker which would just make it sound bad. At the end of the day, the whole reason why they're doing this is to make it sound better. So making it sound bad kind of defeats the purpose. Right, Fernando? Correct. So now we're gonna go with the SPS 619s and the SPS 510s in the dash. Back to the dash kit. The first step we want to take is removing all our peripherals, so air conditioning controls, this, the AC vents, all these things need to come off. All right, we'll go ahead and set this aside. We have a bag of hearts. Ooh, see, there we go. That's weird, the last kit we did didn't actually have these stickers. It had this sticker already stuck on there, which looked terrible, because there was an airbag right here. This one actually comes with just a plain sticker to go right here. That's cool. Maybe we got an early production model and they've changed it since then. It also comes with these guys right here. These are designed to go here and then on the other side like this to fill in the spacing for the what would be the airbag switch, but in this case it's just a hazard switch. Now there's a second bag 
And then that second bag is all the new panel clips. Of course, come all jacked up. You wanna go ahead, open those and lay them out individually. And it comes with two screws. These two screws are for right here to hold those little pieces on. We'll go ahead and screw those in. All right, now we wanna use the screws that the radio that we just took out to screw these back in. Now for screwing it back in, I like to switch to a hand tool. That way you don't crack the dash kit when you're screwing it back together. All right, so this is our new dash kit. We're gonna save these guys here. We're just gonna set these off to the side. We actually don't wanna put these in until the very end. And the reason why is because this is one of those dash kits where you actually have to line the radio up just perfect before you snap this back on. And if the clips are on here, it just makes it really hard because you gotta keep on clipping it, clipping it, on clipping it. So we'll wait till the very end to put those on when we have the radio just at the right depth. So this is what they do for speakers. Little pieces of cardboard, pretty cool. This is where that cool skew driver comes in handy. There we go, nice piece of cardboard. Yay. So we're gonna use the BAA 20 antenna adapter along with the BHA 1818 harness. Let's go ahead and get our radio out of the box so we can finish building the dash kit. Now, metric kits don't come with screws for the radio, so make sure you don't lose the screws that came with your radio. Now we just need to add on the right and left brackets. And they do label them, left and right. All right, let's take it in the car and test fit it. This this kit is just so but at least I mean it look it's like jacked that way. Is there a dot on both sides? Just yeah, there's a dot on both sides. So I need to drill those holes bigger. All right, so it is at the right depth now. The problem is, of course, getting it left and right centered. We had to drill the holes a little bigger so that it would do that. Now we have the leeway to actually do that to slide it back and forth. Okay. Now we need to make the harness. Now real quick, we're running new speaker wires for these two guys here. So these two are gonna be front on the radio and then the driver's doors are gonna be rear on the radio. And then we're not gonna connect the very rear speakers as we said. So what we're doing is we're gonna go ahead and add some quick disconnects to the front outputs of the radio so that we can plug in the wires that Fernando's running for those. And we're gonna do that first so that I don't get confused when I'm going to wire this up and wire it up weird. Now we wanna just take this into the car and see what wires are there, meaning specifically like the power antenna. I, there's nothing for this brown one, we're just gonna remove that, but I wanna check the power antenna. So we are all set and ready to go. We have, these are if he ever decides to power up the rear speakers. We have our dash speaker wires here. We have the rear speakers going to the front speakers on this. Let's get it into the car, hook these up and get this bad boy out of here. What's the weather like today? It's currently cloudy. This one is done. CarPlay works? Check. Doesn't have stereo controls? Check. Doesn't have a backup camera? Check. Do we set the clock? Nope. All right, so we're gonna set the clock, we're gonna pull this one out, and we're gonna move on to the next one. Sounds like a plan, right? Yes, sir. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> 